Κώστας Καπάκας, Ουρανία, 2005, Γρηγόρης Καραδινάκης, Χαρίτων Σκουάρ, 2005, Uh, 2005. These were all um, um, film directors who were teenagers at the time of the of the junta. And I think what's interesting about this depiction uh, of the junta years is this uh, somehow nostalgic drive that they uh, that they have towards the the time that they were teenagers themselves. And uh, it's all about you know coming of age during the junta years, sexual awakenings, mm -hmm. and so on. But alongside this uh, light and caricaturist uh, uh, dictatorship, uh, reminiscent of the, I think these are, all these films are reminiscent of Commedia Italiana. By, understand, by understating the seriousness of everyday repression and overstating the vulgarity of the regime or its comic sides, a picturesque image was created, reducing the kernels to cardboard characters of a kitschy and, lighty, and light culture which was uh, highly trivializing. The main trope in Greek films regarding the junta until that time, um, or uh, in that time, I'm sorry, uh, was the one of nostalgia for a lost, long, longed for world and the bittersweet sentiment for the sweet 60s, regardless of the repressive context. <coughs> this contrasts with filmic uh, depictions of other dictatorships such as the Argentinian, the Chilean, but also the Turkish one, talking about the Evren dictatorship, focusing on violence and torture, encouraging an active reflection in the audience about the recent past. A non-fictional example of what I call the non-political depiction of the dictatorship is Elias Canelis and, and Anastasis Agathos' Η Κομμωδία της Χούντας, η ελαφριά πλευρά μιας κοτεινής αποχής, the comedy of the junta, the light side of a dark, era. A documentary produced and distributed by Tanea in 2010, probably the last remnant of the previous dead tendency due to the fact, um, well, sorry, the last, the last uh, remnant of the previous tendency. As the title suggests, the documentary focuses on the farcical aspects of the dictatorship. Narrated by Apostolos Doxiadis, a well-known public intellectual in Greece, the film purposefully focuses on the laughable kernels neglecting several important sides of the regime, obscuring even Doxiadis's um, own father's, Doxiadis's own father's collaboration with the colonels on the hot subject of the so-called nation's vow, namely the planned construction of the monumental temple in Athens. Well, Dimitris has worked on that, and uh, I think he could, he, could, uh, he could add some details on this later on. Canelis and Agathos' portrayal of the junta focuses on its comical side, again, the, the grotesqueness of the regime instead of, of, of its barbaric side. By understating this, the seriousness of everyday repression, uh, Canelis and Agathos, again, uh, stick to this idea of Colonel Greece as a banana republic. Drawing on Ro Roger Silverstone's notion of proper distance, media specialist Marita Sturkin has argued that trivialization, irony, domestication and kitchification can be used as a mediating device to create modes of both distancing and proximity in order to, um, to trivialize atrocities through a sense of familiarity and perhaps an illusion of empathy. Thus, the caricature dictatorial figures are denied agency and are rendered incapable of performing torture or instigating a brutal authoritarian regime in all this um, artistic representations. In reality, however, as we know, the junta persecuted, censored, manipulated, repressed, and ultimately tortured in a systematic and methodical way. The, the Greek case is not unique as to the ways in which tragic events um, and the experiences of uh, the defeated, uh, the lived experiences of the defeated um, are silenced and gradually excluded from acts of public remembrance, of collective memory, and of the official construction of history. We need um, to underline here the absence in Greece, however, of a discourse on the collective trauma of the dictatorship period, um, barring the after effects of trauma from being incorporated into what we could call the memory archive of that period. Now, contrary to that tendency, 
In the 2000s, in particular in the, I'm talking about the, the period between 2008 and 2012, um, and while more academic books started appearing on the period crucially after the 40th anniversary of uh, the coup, uh, after 2007 that is, there has also been an upsurge of the realm of public history with a focus on the, uh, on the issue of torture. So somehow going against this official um, amnesia. I'm talking about a number of artifacts. Elias Maglini's interrogation, a novella. Uh, Thodoris Rachiotis Vasanistes, a novel. Jefsen Bokes Lena Song, uh, which is a graphic novel. And Alinda Dimitrius Rain Girls, a documentary. I'm going to come back to the documentary. These, all these artifacts spearheaded this tendency whereby public history almost created, I would dare say, a historiographical trend. These pieces of public history formed an unofficial corpus that could be weighed against the up to that point almost entirely absent of official history of torture in Greece. This new tendency entailed talking about the past by people who did not experience it directly and who often adopted alternative forms of narration by selecting disparate material, narrativizing it, or performing and representing it in intricate ways. Most importantly, they penetrated the past without indulging in its idealization, sanitization, or demonization, primarily by not surrendering to the distortions of the aforementioned bittersweet nostalgic trope, the comic grotesque one, or the heroic epic one. The deposition of memories, oh, this is from the, uh, from the graphic novel, uh, Lena's, Lena's song. The deposition of memories um, oh, where is it? Anyway, I don't have it. By people um, who underwent torture themselves, like Yorgos Kotanidis' memo memoir, All Together Now, in 2012, came as an interesting compliment. All this not only informed, but also altered the way in which we tend to look at the dictatorship years, switching our gaze from grand narratives to private tragedies inflicted on people, real or fictional. Here, public history not only did not trivialize the historic events in question, but on the contrary, complicated our view of them. Apart from this public history exercise on torture, a renewed interest in the junta began with the onset of the economic crisis, as I said, and uh, in particular with, uh, in the summer of 2011, the grassroots social movement of the Aranaktismeni that emerged in Greece, a, a controversial uh, movement rallying against the austerity measures adopted by the <coughs> government of the day. Their slogan, Bread, Education, Freedom, the Huta did not end in 1973. Actually, this was an old slogan that was uh, reappropriated. Brought the past to the fore by adopting the most famous catchphrase of the Polytechnic student uprising, implying continuity in terms of the Greek state's brutal tactics in spite of the transition to democracy, perpetuating the common belief that it was the student movement that brought down the regime in 1973 instead of 1974. Of course, there is the issue of rhyme there too, that helped. In Greek, it rhymes. Despite the symbolic and actual work that the Polytechnic did to discredit the regime's putative democratic evolution, this interpretation, of course, is strikingly inaccurate, as we know, as the junta collapsed because of its involvement in Cyprus. At the same time, the slogan implied that after the transition to democracy, Greece did not cease to be authoritarian. There is a certain revisionism that is interesting to note here. For the people chanting this slogan, the story of the Greek transition to democracy of the Metapolitefsi was not half as rosy as it used to be portrayed until very recently by textbooks and the like. At the same time, the slogan reflected the need to revisit the very beginning of democracy in 74, reaching even further back to uh, late autumn of, of 73, when democracy should have actually started, as the slogan implies. So we're dealing here with a third generation of people, people who did not experience the dictatorship themselves, again, rediscovering the painful past and also instrumentalizing it. Um, a useful theoretical tool here is that of post-memory a term reflecting the uneasy oscillation between continuity and rapture around trauma in intergenerational terms, but I'm, I don't have time to uh, get more into this. 
Αλήντα Δημητρίου στη documentary Τα κορίτσια τη βροχή, The Girls of Rain, from 2011, that I already mentioned, um, made a similar case as the Αγανακτισμένη, uh, they made a similar case in point regarding the current state of affairs in Greece. Right in the midst of the crisis, Dimitriou interviewed 50 women who had been tortured during the dictatorship period. Actually, not just the dictatorship, also um, uh, slightly before the dictatorship too. So what we could call during the long 60s in Greece. After some of her interviews recounted the ways in which they were brutally tortured, Dimit Dimitriou in the, uh, the documentary does not use any images, any uh, footage whatsoever from the period. The only footage that we see are, is footage from 2011 and um, basically clashes between protesters and police at Sindagma Square. So she, she makes jump cuts uh, to the present day police brutality. And that's another, that's another moment. Actually, this is very interesting as well because the slog, both, both the, the, the graffitis are referring to the junta. You know, one is Capi Junta, and the other one which says, Fola tus kilus tiselas, of course, is a reference to one of the most famous slogans uh, against Ioannidis, Fola tus kilus tisela. In Lambros Tokas Tapetiatu Flevari, a volume of personal testimonies of junta dissidents and political detainees, um, the latter seem to share to a large extent the view that uh, even though the violation of human rights during the military dictatorship cannot be compared to that of a liberal democracy, there are some similarities and troubling continuities, especially within the context of socio socioeconomic crisis, sorry. Arguing that the repressive mechanism of the Greek state has not democratized, and that a hardline anti-democratic structure has remained intact is a powerful, albeit very controversial statement regarding the supposed continuities of authoritarianism. Oh, it has to be noted here regarding uh, the Dimitrius documentary that some of the former junta detainees themselves seem to agree with this kind of reading, uh, namely the, the conscious use of their memories in order to uh, talk about the present day repressive policies, but there were others who felt offended by this use by the, by the film director, feeling that their memories had been seriously abused. A more recent case using torture as a privileged lens of analysis, or uh, tool of analysis of past traumas, was uh, an installation by musicologist Anna Papayeti and sound expert Nectarios Papas in 2016 within the framework of the much acclaimed Hypnos project uh, that was sponsored by the Stegi Grammaton Excer Technon. Excerpts from the 1975 trials of the torturers and audio interviews revealed the widespread use of radio and popular songs during detention and interrogation of uh, dissidents during the Junta years. Um, the, 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 that was the, the, the technique of torture whereby uh, music was uh, played in a loop day and night in conditions of total isolation. Actually a very effective torture technique that would lead to sleep deprivation and psychological collapse. The installation involved this uh, empty cubicle that you see that was uh, reminiscent of a cell whereby uh, a terrifying sensory experience uh, included a trembling dim light and the sounds of iron bars intermingled with bell rings and distorted songs. Actually, I went there and uh, you know, I can tell you that it was quite terrifying. This multisensorial experience was true to the original form of torture itself, but it also made one reflect on the devastating effects of this honoring bombardment under detention. As Papaiti herself noted in an interview in Kathmerini, I quote, I believe we tend to underestimate the colonels. We remember them through their funny speeches and their kitsch, and we don't think of them as capable of exercising such developed forms of torture. But on the other hand, that is precisely the power of this kind of torture. You don't see it, you don't expect it." End of quote. Hence, we're dealing with a powerful departure from the comic and a gradual focus 
of you know back to the brutal side of the junta. So from the brutal to the comic and back to the brutal. The brutality of the regime was equally tackled in September 2016 when the former uh, special interrogation unit of the Greek military police, of course, the infamous EATESA, uh, currently at the Parco Eleftherias in the center of Athens, one of the main sites of detention, interrogation, and torture of political activists and suspected citizens during the junta, hosted Documenta 14, the radical um, uh, German exhibition that for the first time took place both in Castle in Germany and Athens. The Polish and Spanish curators of the Comenta chose the specific site precisely due to its dark past and spatial and political symbolic power in an attempt to render Greece's traumatic past of, of political violence and state terror visible, relevant, and comparable to similar oppressive regimes in Latin America. Through this exhibition, the curators chose to stress the connections between the end of the dictatorships in the global south in the 70s and 80s, uh, and neoliberalism, as they said in their manifesto, a controversial decision uh, that uh, generated reactions in parts of the Greek press. The, resp the responses of, of much of the center-right and center-left press actually uh, were polemic, to say the least. Involved in this criticism was writer Elias Maglinis, who, as I said before, had analyzed torture himself in the past in his brilliant novella Nakris, actually a novella that tackled the intergenerational trauma transmission between a father who had been tortured at the Atesa during the junta and his art artist daughter at present already, uh, and his artist daughter at present. Maglinis, not unlike other commentators, uh, in an article called Oixegermenos Zorbas, or Zorba the Rebel, accused the conveners of the exhibition of little knowledge of Greece's history, while others deemed this revival of the past as politically dubious and artistically suspicious. The question, of course, is why did the documenta provoke such virulent reactions? I have to add here that the reactions continue uh, as the documenta continues. The document attempted to render the political subaltern bodies of uh, women and men um, uh, who were tortured at the time visible, reintroducing through a comparative perspective the Greek military dictatorship as a contested subject. As theorist Patricia Felisa Berbato notes, all these issues touch on very sensitive debates in current culture. That is the legacy of the protest movements and leftist politics of the 20th century. Trauma is both an individual and collective phenomenon, generational and gender perspect perspectives on aesthetics and politics, and the political potentialities of art. Most particularly, the focus on the body is a grounding trope for this debate, a medium of performance and communication that is used to explore the boundaries between the history of violence and traumatic memory. Similar cases can be seen in Spain, Portugal, but also Argentina in the context of economic crisis, whereby one can observe a need for rediscovering the past, visit, revisit past injustices, and recover historical memory. A great difference, of course, with the case of Greece is the absence of organized demands of accountability regarding the dictatorship period um, in Greece, most notably from local human rights groups and transnational advocacy networks. Such voices are very much present in Spain, Argentina, in Chile, considering the durability and duress of these regimes compared to the kernels, but also the different nature of the transitional processes and justice systems. But even though in Greece there are no persistent actors and militants who continue to fight for their memories, like human rights groups, journalists, and judges, there is nevertheless a context of growing civic engagement, a public still implicated in each other's trauma, to quote theorist Kathy Carruth, and a history which is not fixed, but constantly shifting. There are several questions that need to be tackled by historians, but I would also add memory studies experts who have to step in, in terms of Greece's recent dictatorial past. And that is, who remembers? What is remembered and what is not? What is the relation between active forgetting and targeted memory repression? And how can counter-memories, to use Michel Foucault's famous term, uh, be better articulated? 
The centrality of repressed memory, trauma, post-memory, performativity, the private versus public aspect, as well as the comic versus the brutal side of the Greek regime, cry out for more scholarly attention to the seven-year dictatorship and its legacies and afterlives. Not in isolation, but in comparison with other authoritarian regimes, at least in terms of uh, the bodily experience, uh, but also the, uh, the aspect of torture and the gendered aspect of torture. 50 years since the imposition of the military dictatorship, more ascesis in remembrance is in order so that the taboos of recent history are decisively dealt with head on. Only time will show if the lurking time bomb regarding the dark Greek 60s will detonate any time now or whether it will be promptly deactivated. Thank you very much. speakers for respecting time limits and allowing um, ample time for questions. I would like to open the floor to questions, comments. I have a question for my friend Othon about the education and, and you know religious education. Yeah. Did the Hunda change it or was it the same? They use the same you know textbooks for religious education as in the past or today? Religious. Hmm? Religious, education. religious, yeah. Um, there is a, a degree of continuity there um, in that um, the Helen of Christian education was, was part of the, of the official narrative um, uh, since, the, since the beginning of the, uh, of the independent state of, of Greece. Um, and um, in that sense, there wasn't anything radically new that appeared. Um, but at the same time, um, there were um, uh, the close connections with the church or a part of the church because the, the policy of, um, of the military junta towards the church was also equally divided as it was with, uh, with other uh, um, uh, areas. Uh, so in that sense, uh, they wanted to use the sectors of, of church that would be supportive of, of them, um, and at the same time uh, try to emphasize uh, that particular ideological uh, dimension. I mean, it was very much part of their own uh, uh, you know, military mind, that um, uh, uh, Orthodox Christian, uh, you know, dimension, um, and, and in that sense, uh, they did emphasize it, but not in a way that you know it's something completely, completely new. I mean, we all know that um, uh, you know it's uh, that um, uh, Greece is a country where the uh, you know with the uh, Christian Orthodox is part of, of culture, is part of the, of memory. You know, we give name only when children are baptized. I mean, you know that. That is really, really part of our um, of, of the culture, um, and um, in that sense, it, it's only uh, the, to the ridiculous level that one can really criticize. But the, uh, I think that the, you know what we are seeing basically is <coughs> the degree of continuity and a conventional approach vis-a-vis, -vis. Um, but obviously uh, um, uh, using uh, the parts of church that were close to the regime. Uh, that's why I made this parallel with education, because again, you know, church is not a unified body. Uh, you know, there are various uh, 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 kind of <coughs> actors with with, uh, with differences within the church as well. Oh, I have a similar question to John Grace, and uh, um, has to do with: um, Are you aware of any possible changes made by the junta? in uh, relation to university curricula, and especially in relation with more sensitive subjects, such as history, also in light of what Dimitri uh, talked about yesterday, vis-a-vis um, -vis the connections with Metaxas. Uh, so I was wondering whether you've uh, seen anything like that, are you aware of anything like that? Change the curricula of uh, history courses in the university, for example? No, that I would be able to tell you, because it's something that I I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would assume that uh, the intervention at, at university level uh, was much more limited, and the, 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 the biggest kind of um, uh, emphasis was at the at the primary and the secondary levels. This is where they, you know, they really had. Uh, but um, I will repeat myself. I'm sorry, but you know what I saw from from my own kind of uh, uh, research is that. Uh, Again, the, you know, there's been a degree of continuity in how history has been, uh, you know, has been addressed, and uh, 
um, uh, with uh, the basically emphasis of, 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 of some uh, particular events in Greek history. So there's kind of a selective understanding of history, which is again is not new, something not new. I mean, you know, the, especially the 20th century history of modern Greece has been always a very sensitive matter um, uh, in, um, in Greek schools. And, uh, is there an indication of people like uh, ideologues, or is it people like uh, Constantine who play a role as far as changes in primary education are concerned? Can I jump into uh, into this um, to uh, to add something regarding curricula? I think there is an interesting. We we tend to um, and and that that goes back to to Andreas' talk of yesterday regarding continuities, because we we talk about continuities since 1974, but there are interesting continuities between 67 and what happened before. Uh, and you mentioned the, the rift that is, that is very clear in educational terms, but there are interesting continuities there too. Um, there, is, there is this period that is a pretty obscure period, which is the period of the, um, of the, of the governments of the so-called apostates. So uh, Stephanopoulos, basically the Stephanopoulos government, and they, uh, annulled, actually Stephanopoulos annulled a, 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 a great part of the educational reform of, of Papanutsos. He, he, talking about curricula, the most famous, very progressive curriculum that was introduced at the time, history curriculum, was Kalokerinos Romaiki ke Mesoniki Historia, and or Historia ton Romaikon ke Mesonikon Chronon, which was uh, deemed to be by um, uh, very conservative publishers like Savas Kostadopoulos, Felethros Cosmos, uh, there was an entire you know propaganda against that as being too progressive and too you know against the the Hellenic Christian ideals and so on, and that was abolished. And um, in, in 19, and we're talking about 1966. Um, like this is a year before the coup. Missing something, and with, with taking the risk of being completely stupid here. If this is the case, and we're witnessing all this continuity, why exactly do we need this authoritarian versus totalitarian political science analysis in order to understand the education of the junta? At what level exactly does this analysis become productive? If if we are dealing with a continuation of pre-junta dynamics. Why exactly do we need this analysis? I wouldn't go as far as you know re relativizing. There is there is a huge difference between. So at what level exactly does this analysis become? Productive? That becomes a systematic coercion. The, you know, it, it's 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 a regime. It's an authoritarian regime. We're not talking about isolated episodes of censorship. It is, but when 1966 and the Calocating North book is an isolated case of of censorship. It's not a systematic, it's not part of a systematic attempt. You know, what I'm trying to ask you is why do we, why is it important to think in terms of authoritarian versus this, this in terms of these categorizations, authoritarian versus totalitarian regimes in order to understand and properly examine the educational policy of the junta. If the degree of continuity is that great? Because, you know, well, I mean, I, I made this distinction. I think it's a, it's a very valid conceptual uh, distinction because when you talk about totalitarianism, I mean, and you know, there you need to look at the, uh, the interwar period, um, which is um, a, a very prominent in terms of, you know, how fascists approach their education or the Nazis. Um, and uh, I mean, it's a completely different level of, um, of approaching education by totalitarian systems because you know, there's really a, you know, a rapture and a full control of, of what is being, um, uh, of what is being um, uh, transmitted. Whereas, you know, when you talk about authoritarian systems, I mean, that is what allows you to have uh, a, a, a big degree of continuity with the past because exactly, you know, you're, they are much more selective in terms of where they, you know, they want to intervene. Um, and, uh, uh, in, in that sense, um, uh, I think that it's you know the, the military junta is, is, is a very valid example of that, and uh, 
uh, it's often, you know, it, I mean, you know, we have to, first of all, think of the junta as the ridiculization of many things, and that's something which is very important, connected also with the, with the use of torture and detention. But at the same time, many of the things that, that you know, that took place, I mean, even, even now, in the, in the very, demo, even in the recent years, in the very democratic periods in Greece, you know, under, understanding history in a different way is a very, very difficult thing in Greece. Mm. So, you know, in that sense, I mean, to, to try and engage with the alternative history of, a, of an event, uh, you know, to look at it from a Turkish or a Bulgarian or another perspective is something very, very difficult. And, you know, even in recent years, you've got uh, historians criticizing each other. Uh, and the other problem, of course, with the teaching of history um, is uh, that the state has been particularly prominent in terms of what kind of history it serves to, you know, to uh, at school. Uh, and um, that is, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, that allowed as well for, for the military Buddha to behave in the way that it did. I mean, you know, parts of it were also acceptable. If I can add to this, one also needs to take into consideration the structure of the U.S. Uh, the Greek educational system. So you know the official textbook that is um, adopted at the Timotiko and Gymnasio, the element, primary, elementary school, and high school, um, it's a very different kind of structure than what you see in at the university level. And at the time, the two prominent universities, the University of Athens and the University of Thessaloniki, Aristotle University, you have a lot of history professors that um, are very selective and they don't have to teach the official um, history book that uh, school teachers at the primary elementary level and at gymnasium have to. So that's, that's something that needs to be considered I mean, as well. For, for many years, it's, it's been changing the last uh, few years, but the actual teaching of history, because that's what's very central.